Hey, this is Lula, and this is the series where we look at the most expensive house for sale in each state. We are way up in Montana today, where I had to skip past a couple of big dollar houses because uh, in Montana, it's all about the land. I don't know if you know this, but the, the wealthy are buying up land in the West like it's hotcakes, because uh, that's where they're going to go live once we all nuke ourselves to death. Uh, so I skipped a $70 million private island with an unfinished mansion that proclaimed it to be self to be like Versailles. Uh, and then another one that was just a huge ass ranch with an underwhelming log cabin on the property. Uh, that leads us to this $25 million four bed, three bath home. You could see, I mean, even from this, uh, that's a big price tag for a not very much house and it's because it's all it's all about the land it's all about this this big ass lake and you know the the prepper bullshit people talk about florida being the weird state but but montana is the stealth case because people there are are fucking nuts but they keep it they keep it on lock they keep it in the house the first person i ever met from montana in college told me a story about how he stabbed his friend in the leg after his friend threw an axe at his head after he hit his friend with some rebar after his friend tried to knock him over while he was in a porta potty so that's that's the caliber of people that we're dealing with and i by the way would like to dedicate this one uh to my dear internet friend sophie who against her will is living in this godforsaken state filled with natural splendor and insane meth heads it's a very difficult state to escape from what i understand uh, partly on account of its size its poor infrastructure and not to mention the bears anyway let's take a look we've got this house on this little bit of land out here crystal clear water uh just just some little boats these are not big ostentatious one percenter boats and yet that's that's kind of one percenter money buddy God, this big, the drive through the covered drive through thing just makes me think that this is like a lodge. Also, the fucking Rolls Royce. Oh my God. Yep, no, this is one percenter shit. These are just the prepper one percenters. That's, I'm getting hungry. I'm getting hungry for human flesh. All right, let's, let's cool our jets here. Uh, we do have this nice big balcony. So it's not just, it's not an unused overhang that we've got here. And we're inside already. Jesus, look at those windows. Those are enormous. Do I have to remind you that we are in Montana where it hits minus 40? That's Fahrenheit and Celsius. There's your fun fact. Minus 40 on the regular. And, and you got windows that big. What does your heating bill look like? Uh, we got this really pretentious, That's that, that table shape only exists to be pretentious we're not doing the symmetrical furniture i'll give them that i do believe that couch might be velvet i i don't know why that's becoming a thing but you know just just be aware of it i guess we're back outside to look at the rolls royce all right this it looks like there might be two pieces to this property there's probably multiple buildings here I, I would probably have to go so far down this list in order to get to a property that doesn't have multiple buildings but this one it looks like has a greenhouse which i i love that um you know you've got a pretty short growing season out here and i'm sure that these people are expecting to survive the zombie apocalypse any day now uh they they just have apocalypse movies on repeat in the in-home movie theater that is doubtless inside this home got a nice little balcony up here though i do like i like the red uh trim on the windows that's that's kind of charming i guess yeah here's another little cabin that's a different one this is maybe a caretaker's house we do have more vegetable gardens out here these ones aren't covered um but they are fenced in so that the grizzly bears don't eat all of your vegetables i guess uh they just eat your caretaker that's the idea and we got a big old barn holy crap that's some beautiful woodwork on that i will say all right and here it is from above uh you kind of see how this driveway spills out when we've got the different buildings connected I, i'm thinking the greenhouse is over here the little cabin might be over here 
Uh, that looks like a boathouse down there. I... You know, it's it's interesting that they've got things split up into different buildings like that, and they haven't done kind of the, the interconnected mission-style compound that we've seen in other places, considering just how cold it gets in the winter. I don't know, if, you know, maybe they're never here in the winter, and they're, and they're only here in the summer. Um, in, in which case, the, I guess the prepper thing isn't much, much of a draw, because... Uh, I mean, if you're coming out here to survive the nuclear winter, guess what? It's winter, buddy. All right. It is, God, for all of the crazy in this state, it is absolutely spectacular landscape. Holy crap. All right. You can see, yeah, this, we got multiple buildings over here. I don't even know what these ones are back inside that same living room but we're looking into it from a different living room i guess they've they've solved the problem of too much floor space uh for a single sitting area by vaguely making it into two rooms i'm i'm confused we haven't gotten to see all of this light fixture up here but it's very distinctive and it's poking down into like every picture and i'm confused about what it is i believe these are paintings of the lake that this house is on which is an interest like it's it's a beautiful painting and it's a beautiful landscape but also i'm pretty sure it's like right there like you could just look out the window i don't know i don't know how i feel about that just like having a big ass painting of exactly what's outside your window hanging on the wall i don't know all right here it is so it's like these weird drums and we've got fake candles on top that look like they've been melted that's that's an interesting one. All right, it's it's not cliche. I will give it that. And we got a big balcony up here. It looks like we do have plants. I always love to see plants, especially when you got these big fucking windows. They're not going to waste, at least. Just all of that natural gas is going to waste. And we do have we've got a paved patio out here. There's oh that's that couch we were looking at before. It's just in front of the. The fireplace so we got this little like fireplace nook this is a big open room i'm it looks like that's the kitchen over there so everything sounds like the kitchen um yeah not not much enclosed space and of course you've got the balcony up here so everything on the balcony sounds like everything downstairs and everything you know i love that they are centering the fireplace like you would in in a traditional lodge or log cabin as if it's going to heat this whole house <laughs> As if this house isn't the most uh, heat inefficient thing that you could ever construct. All right, here's the kitchen. We've got is I think that's a pizza oven. That's you. You gotta really commit to making pizza on a regular basis to justify having a whole ass pizza oven in the wall of your kitchen, man. I'm I'm telling like. It, it seems like one of those things where I'd be like, yeah, 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 I'll get a pizza oven and then I'll make pizza all the time. And I'd make it like every night for a week and then like never again. And then like once or twice a year, I'd like stare at it and feel guilty and make guilt pizza. And then I wouldn't again. Oh, and it's got like a little fireplace. Like it's it's actually powered by the fireplace below. That's like old school pizza. I I hope they use it. Uh, they've got, okay, so this is a really cool detail right here. And this leads me to believe maybe they are using the pizza oven on a regular basis. Uh, so if you're not a baker and you're not, oh, you know, a wealthy person, you might not know this, but this wood block here is specifically for baking. This is just a baking surface. You, you flour this and you roll out your dough on this and it's, it's meant to be kept separate from the rest. And then you've got like a a dough knife that you use to s just scrape everything off of this surface. So that's for rolling out your pizza crusts right there. Oh, oh, we found the hidden refrigerator. It's a hidden refrigerator because you, you can't let them know you eat. If they know that you eat, they might get the idea to feed you to the grizzly bears. I love this. So we've got an oven, a stovetop, and an oven. And I'm not sure, these might be induction plates here. It's it, That's not entirely clear to me. 
But I, I love that it's become this pretension to have the, the stove top and the oven separate from each other, just so you really know that you're like not working on some, some plebeian one size fits all stove slash oven that they, they put ovens on either side and cabinets in the middle. What can you store in there? It must get so hot. Any, anything that you put in there that's food like is going to spoil like crazy. Um, don't store your meds in there. That's for sure. It's going to be a thousand degrees in there. Don't store anything flammable or meltable. That's a useless, those are useless drawers. You could store utensils in there and you got to be careful pulling them out. All right, we got a dining table right next to the kitchen. That's nice wood. We got a bowl of, I don't know, those look like vague spheres. Are those glass spheres? I, I, I don't keep up with the bowl of spheres trends. I sh it's, it's a failing of mine. The ceiling, um, the ceiling is so close to being beautiful. Like the, the cross pieces and the, the diagonal slatted wood, that's all really nice. And then they've got can lights in it. Why? Why do you have can lights? You, you know what? You could have put like little light fixtures on each of the cross pieces. That would have looked nice. But no, you had can lights. Oh, this is like an ante room to the bedroom. That's, you know what, honestly, as I'm trying to con myself into going to bed for the night, this, this might be a good thing or a terrible thing for me to, you know, oh, I'm, I'm just going to migrate to the, the pre-bedroom. <laughs> Stare at my phone for an hour on this couch before I drag myself the rest of the way to the bed. Uh, we do have books on the bookshelves. God, is this the first house where we've seen that? When it wasn't like a formal library? Uh, everything's been... I, I haven't commented much on the colors yet since we've been through here. Everything is very brown. And a lot of it is woodwork. Um, and it's it's been nice woodwork so far. But like, that's just a dark brown wall. And a dark brown couch and a dark brown rug. This is, this is a very brown, and then it looks like that room is brown, but edging into beige. Oh boy. All right, here's the bedroom. Maybe, maybe this is a bedroom for just one person, so you only need the one nightstand. But the fact that they wanted to have a chair in here, as if it was like something was wrong with the room, if it wasn't big enough to have a chair in there, and they've foregone a second nightstand in order to cram it in there. That's, that seems like a, a, a mistake to me. Uh, we got patio doors coming out here, so it gets nice and cold in this room in the dead of winter. I'm hoping those are thermal curtains that you can then never open uh, so that your your seasonal affective disorder is, is real spicy. That's, that's how we like it. What is this? This, I think this is the back of the fireplace. This is wild. It's, I mean, it's an art piece, but I'm trying to figure out, it's, it's sheets of etched glass, obviously. It, it might be backlit, or is the idea that you can see through it and you can see the fire through it? That's, it's very unique, and it, it's very interesting to me. Um, I like that. That is a cool piece, and it's a, it's a cool centerpiece to have. I do always get a little, uh, I don't know, squirrely about these built-in art pieces that like this is part of the house and will be until you tear this giant, you know, I'm, I assume this brick column with the fireplace is weight bearing. So I, I don't even know how you would go about getting rid of this if you got sick of it or it it's it's unique enough that it's not like it's going to become dated um yeah it's yeah i i think i think i like it i think i've talked myself into it okay, we got a little office here and we we do have the dual setup which i think if you're gonna do the floating desk in the room, this is really the ideal way to do it, is you've got one desk back here where you've got your computer with your wires and the wires go down the wall, and then you've got like your front facing desk where you're actually gonna talk to people. Although they've got no, ch they've got these chairs here, but none actually set up in front of this desk. Uh, interesting. 
I do like that they've they've delineated the space with the tile and the wood. Um, it, it really does define the space and it, it limits how you can use it. You're not gonna be moving furniture around too much. Uh, the counter here is interesting, especially with the sink. I'm not really sure how that plays into the utility of the room. All right, we've got a bedroom with a fireplace. Uh, and I have not seen any any TVs over the fireplace. And we got wood storage cut into the wall there. Um, great, because I love to feel like there's bugs in my room when I'm sleeping. We do have some spectator seating here, but it's it's cozy by the fire. It's fine. It's 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 a cozy by the fire seat. Oh, here we are into the bathroom, and this is I'm I'm having trouble. Okay, it's a tile floor. This is just so groovy over here. I don't know what that is trying to be, but it's some sort of style. We got a, a little window seat here. Um, I, I like that they've got these plants tucked in everywhere. Uh, when do you ever use this window seat? Because it's not when you get out of the bath because you're wet and that's fabric. Uh, maybe pre getting into the bath, but also, I'm not sure. I, you, and you've got, is this a velvet? You've got a velvet seat in the bathroom? Are you insane? The, you've got now two seats on either side of the bathtub, neither of which you can sit on after getting out of the bathtub. Great. Great job, everyone. You know what? When I get out of the bathtub, I sit on the closed toilet lid. And I can do that because you can sit on that when you're wet. I assume... This is toilet prison over here. I can't I can't see for sure, but you can't do that and you can't sit anywhere else because you made everything fabric. All right, all right, all right. We got his and hers sinks. We got a giant window with some interesting little etchings on it. We got another bedroom. It's very brown. It is beige rama And we got a, a desk in here and we got stadium seating all facing the bed. We got a desk to make it feel like a hotel. Right, we got another bathroom. This is a gigantic shower with windows in it. It looks like there's fogged glass shutters that you could put over those windows. That's interesting. Um, I guess maybe the idea is that normally it's letting a lot of light into this bathroom, but that's that seems so strange to me that you have to go, despite the remote location, you presumably are living with other people and maybe have guests that might be wandering the outdoors out there. Uh, so you're, you're going to close these before you start showering. That's the point of the fogged glass, uh, which means that you do that before you get undressed. So first you have to go in there. You close the fogged glass. You come back out. You get undressed. Then you go back in the sh Like, that's multiple trips into the shower, first of all. Second of all, exterior window in the huge shower in montana it's gonna be so fucking cold in there and also like i don't even know how glass copes with that kind of you know it's negative 40 out there and you've got hot water raining on the glass in here i, I just i don't know if they make glass that good got another bathroom this one has a very intense complicated tile work here that's that might be a little too busy that's that's borderline tryptophobia there with the, the little jutting out little pieces. I don't the, I don't know. I don't like that. No. And and this pattern on here is vaguely unsettling to me as well. I, I feel like it's glowing, but I don't think it is. Uh mm, no. That's that's a no for me. Oh, we've got this one, I'm, I'm going to confirm this. I'm certain that there is a toilet on the other side of this saloon door, and that is the toilet prison. The toilet has to go in toilet prison uh, because you can't let them know you shit. Uh, if they know that you shit, then they know that you eat, and the jig is up, my friends. We're in a basement now. It's Can Light City. I see a billiards table. I see two Oh my god, how rich are you? You're so wealthy. You've got two billiards tables. That looks like a poker table 
over there. We've got some some kitschy, cliche, pottery barn film posters. Two billiards tables. We don't like to share in here. I've seen bars with like a kajillion people in them get by on, on three billiards tables and the honor system and, and maybe a little bit of bribery. What, I, why do you need two in the one house? All right, we're back out at this secondary house with the greenhouse. We can't see too much more here. Oh, but here is that balcony. This is, this is a nice little enclosed space. We've got a grilling area. We've got a sitting area. I believe we are now inside this secondary house. We've got a fireplace. We got all sorts of knickknacks. Oh boy. We got lots of snowshoes and these look like, those look like artifacts that should be returned to the people. Uh, that's, that's my instinct on, yeah, that basket. That was stolen from someone. That needs to go back to, to its tribe. Um, oh, and then we got rifles. Those rifles are how these things were taken away from their people. Uh, in case you were wondering about the history there. For the record, any one percenters that live in Montana uh, absolutely are participating in the theft of native lands and need to give the land back immediately. Uh, we got a hidden refrigerator. You can't let them know you eat. Even in the guest house, you cannot let them know you eat. Can't let your guard down. Here's the guest house kitchen. We got a Keurig. We got those, God, the, the, the birch bark candles. Did they go to the Pottery Barn outlet? That's so cliche. Oh, and we've got portraits of indigenous people over this bed. Um... Um, you know what? Maybe it was purchased from an indigenous artist, but also I don't know that I don't know that that balances out that you are a one percenter living on a huge fucking swath of stolen land in Montana. I mean, it's it's just so egregious out there, and especially especially the way that that land and natural splendor and natural resources are commodified at that part of the country. Uh, in, in a part of the country where the very concept of, of land ownership was, was a, a, a colonial catastrophe that just demolished the, the previous concept of land stewardship. You know, I'm seeing, I'm seeing a lot of indigenous touches in here. This, this rug, there was a, a similar rug in the kitchen. I'm, you know, I really, really doubt that someone with this kind of dough is they they may be buying this from indigenous artists but i i doubt that they are living their lives in a way that is not actively harmful to indigenous lives all right we've got a big old patio here with a little fire pit there's that caretaker cabin and the little boats it, that i mean it's god look how clear that water is that's really amazing it's a beautiful stretch of land. God. Look at that. And here it is in winter. You can see the whole lake frozen over. This vastly increases the, uh, <laughs> the usable land on the property. I wonder how that Rolls Royce does in the snow. We seem to be back in a basement somewhere. This is the basement bar. We got our, you know, tacky neon. Good for you. Having everything stacked up on the counters here is is a little I don't know. I guess I guess I would expect them to to build like a fake bar with like shelves for it or something. Oh, we got the wine cellar. We got the wine cellar. You might actually have to be careful about storing these in the basement in the winter. It it might actually get too cold to store wine in a basement. This is an actual cellar. You can see that is some some rough ceiling and wall there. This is like carved into rock here. Oh my. What the fuck is this? Oh, I, 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 I can't focus my eyes on anything. I'm too overwhelmed. Is it the boats? Is it the multiple boats mounted on the ceiling and the wall? And is that another boat? Why are there so many boats in here? There's another one. Oh my God, there's so many boats 
why is this silver? Why is that chair a mirror? There's two. There's two mirror chairs. Why do they exist? Uh, is this is this a work desk? That's a computer. Is someone working there? Can you imagine trying to work in this environment and be productive and not just be overstimulated to the point that you're like moments from a heart attack? Because that's, that's where I'm at right now, my friend. Oh, Lord. What is all this knickknacks and shit over here oh was that in the garage is that where we just came out of i'm i'm so confused is the rolls royce in there all right we're back Whew, they're just showing us like soothing see that's a secret door down there that's that's the way to the shire right there that's a hobbit hole i don't uh, maybe that goes to the wine cellar maybe that's the bomb shelter that might be the fallout shelter down there oh boy i don't know and we're back on natural. I'm, I'm glad that they've, they're, they're trying to soothe my <laughs> ragged nerves after showing me that very stressful room. Yeah, I mean, look at this land. It's, it's really gorgeous. I mean, that's, that's Montana. It is problematic splendor. That's, if I had to just distill it down to one sentence that would be it uh, obviously these people are incredibly wealthy obviously they're taking a lot of the the wealthy people niches um obviously they are here in the winter this might be a, a full-time round kind of house i mean this doesn't read like a prepper house in that it's you know rugged or anything like that they're not roughing it they're living in luxury with their rolls royce and their wine cellar and built two billiards tables god there's yeah the indigenous culture is very prominent in places like montana and so you do expect to see it in people's homes but seeing it in a home like this on a property like this with a price tag like this um it's it's very uncomfortable and it's it's not right yeah it's what a what a house it it really is a, about what I would expect from from the dynamics that I yeah we've got another that's another indigenous artwork up there. This this is about what I would expect. And uh, well, it doesn't it doesn't feel great. I mean, there's there's some things about it that are very nice from a house perspective, but the the whole vibe and the whole context of it is just rancid. Absolutely. Well, that's Montana. Uh, if you need something uplifting to go look at after this, maybe go look up the uh, the Montana meth ads. Apparently they used to play those during cartoons, according to one of my Montana friends. Um, if you saw anything that I missed, if you've got any thoughts about the wealthy in the West, uh, leave it in the comments. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and have a good one.